Hey guys, Patriot coming to you from the desktop with a hopefully short review. Uh, I actually kind of made this uh, video already, but it turned out to be long, so I'm just kind of condensing it. We're just going to focus on the sheath modification for the uh, SOG Northwest Ranger. As you can see here, I picked up a new SOG Northwest Ranger, the previous one that I had for about a year and a half, year and a couple months, I guess. Um, I actually accidentally dropped, hit a rock, flattened out the uh, very end of the belly of the knife here and uh, I, I did repair it pretty decently but it always had a flat spot in there and I just didn't like how it, feel, how it felt when I was drawing it across material. Uh, in any case I, uh, I sold that knife for 40 bucks and and uh, got some money back out of it and picked this one up on sale at Sportsman's War, uh, Warehouse today for 59 bucks. Not bad for a, a brand new Northwest Ranger so uh, I'm pretty uh, pretty excited about the knife, but uh, let's go ahead and just focus on the uh, sheath modification for now. So anybody who's familiar with the Northwest Ranger, or even those who are not, the the sheath for this knife is uh, really an inferior style. You know, I, I think the guy who kind of designed this uh, took it right out of uh, uh, Buck's 1960 catalog put the old style belt loop on here with the uh, little retention leather piece with the snap. The snap's real good. I do like that. The box construction of the uh, sheath of the knife or the main body of the knife uh, of the sheath here is pretty decent. It's not too bad. It's not, you know, all squarely ground and everything. It's a, it's a little bit rough, but the stitching's good and the rivets seem to be pretty good. So I decided to go ahead and try to keep this portion, but uh, as you can see, this is completely gone. All right, what you'll notice when you look at the end of the sheath is the back portion of it is actually a double stack of leather. Uh, and that double stack of leather created the belt loop right here. And so all I did was take a, uh, and this is real easy, you're only going to need three tools to uh, make this modification. What I did is I took a little straight edge razor here. You can use an X-Acto knife or a box cutter. Anything, if you've got a flat edge though here, it will, uh, it will help you. If you've got a, uh, say, a, uh, a Kershaw leak, that will work because it's kind of got that, that flat edge to it. But uh, all I did was kind of cut through this. It'll take you a couple passes to go through. I actually used this, the uh, top of the, the sheath as the square to cut that off evenly. And within a couple passes, this actually came off very easily with, uh, with a sharp razor blade. So the next uh, tool that you're going to need for this modification is a drill. So get yourself a drill with the right size bit. When I say right size bit, I'm talking about whatever the diameter of your shot cord is going to be. In this case, I believe it's about three millimeters. I don't think it's four. Yeah, I think it's three millimeter shot cord. Uh, you can see down here at the very tip of the sheath, I actually cut a hole, or I drilled a hole through to the other side. Now, I don't know what this little relief cut is. Somebody who works with leather and, and stuff like that would probably be able to tell me. If so, just put it in the comments. But they've got a little hole here. Now, it would have been easy to just, you know, kind of line up with that hole and utilize what's there. The reason that I didn't do that and I went lower instead was because when the, the knife is seated in the sheath, I would run into actually cutting the shock cord down here on uh, where it runs through the interior of uh, the box. So that's why I went a little bit lower. You can see I've got extra clearance there and I'm not accidentally going to cut that when this knife is uh, put back into the sheath. So after you've cut your hole through there, put that back away, uh, take a piece of shock cord. That's another thing that you're going to need is about a dollar's worth of uh, three millimeter shock cord and cut yourself off about maybe a 12 to 13 inch piece um, and you run that through and uh, bring it up to this position so basically what we're doing here is we're retaining the Northwest Ranger with a piece of shock cord on its little uh, finger guard so this little finger guard of course has these little grooves in it right here it's got two grooves appears to be polished so it's not real rough. I don't think you'll run into any problem with that piece of shot cord wearing on there 
but uh, it gives a really uh, real good positive retention. You can see how deep that shock core goes in those little half rounds so it's not in danger of slipping out of that groove once you put it there. Uh, I guess if you you know something tugged on this hard enough it could you know rip it off the side or something like that but otherwise you're not going to have any problem. Uh, let me here, show you how uh, you can see that's retained really well in there. If I look at the uh, take a, a knife like the Benchmade Ranch right here if you give that a good shake upside down it actually backs out the knife and exposes part of the edge right here. So uh, a great knife it's just that there's some benefits to having that thing positively retained uh, with with the shock cord. Alright, let's zoom in here a little bit and I wanted to show you one of the nuanced ancillary benefits to this uh, positive tension system. When this is hooked onto the guard of the knife, it's actually pulling it in this direction. When it pulls it in this direction, it forces the tip end of the knife here up against the top of the leather. So what we're talking about is the top blade, the top little blade back here, is butted up against the inside of the top of the sheath. Now when it's angled in that direction, you can see that the cutting edge of the knife is actually picked up and away from the inside of the case. So uh, there's kind of this old, this old uh, hunter's rule that, uh, you, that you sharpen your knife and you put it away and uh, you take it out a year later and, and it's not as sharp as when you put it in there. Well, there's nothing magic happening there, but uh, if you're carrying your knife a lot, especially with these old leather sheaths, which, you know, this is a, uh, an older style, there's a lot of slop in there and this thing rattles and gives and moves around and as it does that the cutting edge is touching the leather and over time it's just taking the fine edge off of uh, off of your cutting edge alright here so before we get started I just want to emphasize again this isn't uh, uh, set up for a belt knife because I'm not utilizing it that way I'm gonna be using this this is one of those things that I get to where I'm going I pull it out of my backpack I put it on a, uh, a neck knife lanyard or I put it inside of like a little vertical pocket here that's on my 511 uh, tack light pants and you can see this ends up being pretty handy pretty quick you don't have to fuss around with this a lot it's loose so you can get it out set it aside change change positions with it whatever you want to do but you can see that the uh, shock cord with this little tab on it actually works out really good. Now you could actually modify this tab if you wanted to. Wrap it in Gorilla Tape, put red on it, you know, whatever whatever a person wants to do to kind of customize that. But I find even with these little rabbit ear loose ends, it's quick to get to. It's not a fussy system. Alright, let me show you here on the other side of my pants, there's uh, more of a, a flush pocket without a flap to it. And this one is actually tighter. So when I get the knife down into this one, it, uh, it's, it's kind of locked in there. Uh, so I can bend, I can move, I can do stuff, and this isn't going to fall out. I kind of have to wiggle this out of my pocket to get it out. But even from this position, you can see the uh, little rabbit ears are pretty quick to grab, and, uh, and it's a pretty easy system. I can operate it with one hand if I want or I can reach over and hold the top as I pull up on this. So there's some pretty good tension on that shock cord. A few pounds worth of pressure anyhow. Enough that it's not going to fly out. You saw how hard I was uh, pushing on the... Uh, I was trying to shake it out of the case. Alright, so what I noticed when I took this out, as I pulled this out, my little retainer here actually slid down the case. So let me show you what I did to uh, uh, take care of that situation. Actually, before I do that, let's talk about what this is in the first place. Okay, this is a little cord retainer. So, here's my tension cord here, and if this wasn't here, obviously gravity would just let this swing down, and I'd have to reach down and find it every time and pull it all the way back up to, to, the, uh, to the knife. Because of this little retention system here, my tab is always real close to the end of the knife. You'll see I can put that around on the inside there if I want to clean exterior, I don't want something pulling on it, maybe I wear it right side or whatever, um, or I can flip it around this way. It doesn't matter where you put it, it's always retained. 
but uh, you can see when I let it loose, it doesn't fall down. So that's what that is there for. Uh, the other benefit to having this here, you can see I've triple wrapped this around here. It just so happens that the triple wrap with these little tag ends right here is the uh, exact length plus a little bit extra. So not exact length, but it's a little bit of extra shock cord. And if this should ever break for some reason, maybe it you know wears through or you know something. I've had this on and off lots of times, so I can't imagine anything happening to it. I have a, a spare piece of shock cord. I can actually take this off and use it for the tensioning cord now. So I've got a backup there. I've got a spare. So uh, always nice to guard against Murphy's Law because you know you get out there and this will find a way to a way of breaking. So kind of nice to have the spare right there. You can see I've actually put a couple of small knots in the end and uh, run it underneath the tensioning cord, and that keeps everything neat, neat and tidy right there. All right, going back to the first time I took that took this knife out of that small pocket in my uh, 511 tack lights, this pulled down when I when I took it out. Well, to uh, keep that from happening, I've actually cut a couple of grooves up here on the leather. So you can see where I've kind of made a little 90 degree cut on both ends or both sides of the sheath, front and back and uh, it's just enough to retain that shock cord. Let me show you how I did that. Okay, so nothing fancy at all here. Um, I just went in with a 90 degree cut right here and uh, just kind of wiggled this down until it sunk into the uh, leather a little bit and then I went over to this side and cut down into that and after that I started here at the front and shaved up to my initial cut, my original cut and then I went ahead and shaved the leather down to this block right here, uh, the, uh, the other cut. Same thing on this side, I just cut into this 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here, shaved out the center, and it left it with kind of a little, uh, not quite a dovetail, but you guys get the idea. And uh, now, that thing is very positively retained, and you saw when I just pulled it out of that tight pocket, even with this little knot stick in here, it did not pull down, so uh, uh, great little handy system and it's simple you're talking about a dollar's worth of uh, shock cord uh, a razor blade a drill and a sharpie marker now speaking of the shark uh, sharpie marker you can see here where I cut that made that initial cut taking the uh, belt loop off all I did was blacken that uh, you can see right here on this edge I had a 90 degree edge there that was really sticking up you know the knife is pretty flat across here yet this 90 degree edge was just kind of hanging up here and it felt like it was catching everything so all I did was put this on a chopping block and basically came in with a uh, uh, a 45 degree cut and just pressed it straight down that leather um, cut very easily actually and you can see I dressed up the end a little bit here uh, what I might do is uh, take a sander to this and make it nice and round and flush instead of the uh, 45 degree angles but I just wanted to show you how simply it could be done in fact I might even get out the uh, sander and do that on video if you guys want to hang around for the rest Notice this dry leather really absorbs that uh, that ink, and you don't have to do it this way, guys. You can use a uh, a black leather dye if you want. I just I just don't care enough to uh, spend the time to do that. Um, this works perfectly good, and it soaks into the leather real nicely as well. Since I've taken a little bit more surface leather off, I might go ahead and treat this with. Uh, with wax just to kind of impregnate the leather there with a little bit but you can see this works pretty good here
touch it up as good as you want to. But there it is. I like it better with the slightly rounded corners. I wasn't able to completely round that one out because uh, it, I had cut a pretty big flat piece out of there. But you can see, pretty good looking case. So, if you're still hanging on, thanks for watching guys. Patriot out.